Would you mind? Let me just pray for a second. Can anyone please close your eyes and bow your heads? Thank you, God, for bringing us this week safely and sound. Thank you, God, for keeping us all together as one. Thank you, God, for just bringing us through all of our trials and tribulations. Thank you, God, for all the positive and the negative that we see. Without you, we would not be here. We are still here because you have something for us to do. Yes, hallelujah. And we appreciate that, Lord. Yes. We just want to keep giving you the honest and all the praise for what you do for us. Yes, yes. We want to say thank you, Lord, for this Passover and also Happy Easter. There was no other one like you, Lord. Just want to keep magnifying your name and giving you all the praise because you deserve it. Yes. Thank you, God, for the week that's ahead. Please bless us, keep us safe in your arms, and please give us a good message for the week. Yes. Can you show yourself, Lord, and let us know that we are confident to share your word? Yes. There's no need for our heads down. You are the son, so we should stand straight up and look for you. Yeah. I just want to say thank you, God, again, because yeah. you just deserve it. Hallelujah. And this is all ours. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to lift your name on high.
it also allowed for us to understand the true essence of this thing called love. Mm -hmm. He showed us what sacrificing is. Yeah. But what I like about it the most is he showed us how to endure in the midst of all the pain mm -hmm. and the agony yeah. and allow us to know that when we depend on God, there's nothing he can't see us through. Amen. I forgot a witness. Amen. Amen. It is so good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. And uh, we just got to ask Papa a question. Did he let go of your echo? Yes, sir. He did. All right. So we had, we okay there. Amen. Amen. You would have had to have been there to understand that statement right there. Amen. God is good. It's so good to see you this morning. And God has blessed us to see another resurrection day in the year of 2022. We have come together to celebrate another re resurrection day. And, 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 and you feel the awesomeness and the purity of God when you walk in. And uh, this is beautiful, a great display of how pure the love is and how pure the sacrifice was on our behalf. Amen? Amen. And I want us today, I know we always look at, we always have on Easter, we have that Easter message where we talk about him getting up and talking about him, but I, I, God has given me something a little different. Uh, Pastor West, I, I think we don't pay enough emphasis on the things that was happening um, even before he went to the cross. Because there's some things that we have to look at and, and imagine just how gruesome it was for what he went through and how he had the power to walk away from it. But because he knew he did it for us, he had to stay there. Amen. And if you can, if you will, I don't want to labor before you long, but if you can meet me over in the gospel according to John um, chapter number 19 one thing about the gospels I like reading John's gospels because we know that Matthew, Mark and Luke their accounts of what Jesus did was based off of what they heard whereas John's gospel was written based off of what he experienced he actually was there with Jesus so when he writes his gospel, he's not writing from what he heard. He's not writing from what he speculated. But yet he's writing from the standpoint of him being there. Amen. And, and, and when you compare them all, you will notice at the end they all pretty much say the same thing. But John seems to give you a little bit more detail. Amen. Meet me over in the gospel according to John chapter number 19. We're just going to look at the first four verses. Amen. When you have it, just stand to your feet. Amen. And you all just pray with me this morning. Amen. It's been a really, really, really rough two or three days. It has been really rough. And, uh, but I know God is up to something. Amen. Verse number one says, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers also twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and clothed him in a purple robe. Verse three says, And they kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and were slapping his face. Verse 4 said, Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no grounds for charging him. Some other version says, I find no fault in him. But for a few minutes, I want to use as a subject this morning, withstanding the agony to extend the love withstanding the agony to extend the love. Father, we thank you now for your many blessings. We thank you 
for watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered. You woke us to see another day, clothed us in our right frame of mind, given us the activities of our limbs, and for that, Lord, we say thank you. God, we give your name honor and praise for we know that well over 2,000 years ago, on this day, you rose with all power. But God, the things that you did before you even went to the cross, we say thank you. So we ask you now, God, to clear our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our spirits to hear from you. That we may get a better and a clearer understanding of the sacrifice that you made for us. Enabling us to have a right to the tree of life. And so we thank you, God. We honor you, praise you. We ask you, O oh God, to anoint these old lips of clay. Allow what I say, God, to be all of you and none of me. And I thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One thing I want you to see about this is the very first thing that I want you to see is even though they didn't want to receive him as the king, they still referenced him as the king. Even in their mocking, they were still acknowledging him and who he was. But what I want you to see and understand is even though they understood even in themselves that he was more than what they believed he was, that he was exactly who he said he was, this is a time that they had to go and try to make themselves look better by humiliating him who came here on assignment. Right. Have I got a witness? And I need you to understand, and we face this in our churches and in our lives on an everyday basis where when somebody is intimidated by who you are, they'll go out of their way to try to humiliate you or to try to make you look worse than what they perceive of you. Have I got a witness? It's amazing that, that, that they feel the essence of God on you, but yet instead of them embracing who God is in your life, they would rather turn and make somebody else believe that you're not who you said you are. Have I got a witness in you? It, 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 isn't it amazing on your job? You can be on your job and you're a good employee, but the moment that somebody starts hating on you, then they want to start saying that you're painting the picture that you're something that you're not. But I need you to understand something. When you stand in the true absence and the osmosis of who God is, it doesn't matter what people say and what people do. They can hurt you. They can scandalize your name. But the God that I serve, he will still prevail no matter what. Have I got a witness? It, it doesn't matter. When he prevails, just understand that he will prevail. And so when we look at this, look, look, this is what got me. As God was sharing this with me, this is what got me. Because not only did they plan to, to, to do this to Jesus, but I need you to know that they planned this and they tried to plan it in the most gruesome way that they could plan it. They did, the, and it took some planning out in order to try to make Jesus suffer to the magnitude that he was suffering. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Listen, let, 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 me show, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now here it says, in verse number one, Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. If we look at, had him flogged. Some versions say had him scored. Basically at this point, what they did was, they took Jesus and they whipped him. After they stripped his clothes off of him, they whipped him. Now, now watch. When you think about this, the way that they whipped him, they whipped him with these leather straps. And in these leather straps, these leather straps contained broken glass and it pertained ripped pieces of nail and, and it pertained to all of these things that would not only inflict pain, but that would literally cause your flesh to be ripped out of your body. So it took some malicious thinking, it took some malicious thinking to say, how can I inflict enough pain on this guy? Uh, because see, in their mind, they're figuring they can whip him and make him die in the midst of their whipping. But I come by to tell you that prophecy in the Old Testament, Isaiah prophesied that he would go through some suffering, but that he would not die with any broken bones. It said that he will suffer, but he's going to rise again. It, Isaiah said that, and I come by to tell you that when prophecy...
prophecy went forth in the Old Testament. Can I just share something with you real quick? Old Testament is concealed and the New Testament is revealed. So in other words, when you hear something spoken in the Old Testament and you get into the New Testament, it reveals what was said and how it was done when you get to the New Testament. Isaiah said that this, that this young man would die and now we're in the New Testament and listen to what happens. They began to score him. They began to beat him. They began to whip him. They began to pull flesh up out of his body. But isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that, that, that some writers will tell you that he had 39 lashes. And if you think about that, 39 lashes, you say, well, how would they come up with the number 39 lashes. Well, if you go over into the book of Deuteronomy, you will find out in the book of Deuteronomy, the Jewish custom in them times was simply this. They said that you, when you got beat in your punishment, that you would not get beat or whipped or hit with more than 40 slashes or lashes or stripes is what they call. You would not get more than 40. So isn't it amazing in the New Testament they are still going by what the Old Testament law was at that time. So we know that Jesus may have got 40, but he didn't get no more than 40. So they, most writers say he got 39 lashes. But watch this. He got 39 whips, Josh. But each one of them whips, them, them stripes that he had, they had things that were potentially increasing the magnitude of the pain. Because if you rip... How many of us have ever cut our finger on a piece of glass? And you don't have to cut your finger again for you to be reminded that you were cut. Let the next time you touch something, the pain in your hand is going to remind you. And, and it isn't amazing that when you wake up the next morning, you wake up the next morning and your finger is more sore the next day than it was the day that you got it cut. Have I got a witness in here? Have you ever bumped your knee after you hurt your knee and find out that now your knee hurts worse because you keep hitting it in the same spot. And here you find these men, if they maliciously thought about this, then you know that they weren't trying to be care and careful or caring as they began to whip him. And they're whipping him and they're whipping him. And listen, the Bible, even when you begin to research, it, was, it wasn't just a whip. I'm going to take somebody back. It wasn't like your mama when she whipped you. Amen? Uh, 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 uh. Back in the day, mama used to say, go outside and get a switch. Anybody anybody had one of them switch whoopings before? I forgot a witness. And isn't it amazing that that switch, she didn't have to rip the switch out for her to hit you and it left a whip. Have I got a witness? Amen. She would hit you. I wait a minute. Let me go a little bit further. Hey, I got any folk in here that got a station cord whooping? <laughs> See, some of y'all too young to know about them. You get that station cord whipping, and, and if mama hits you in the right place, it'll seem to make that skin bubble up or open up or whatever. She'll pop you, and you know you've been hit with that station cord. You know you've been hit with that whip. Now, think about if it had some glass in it. Think about if it had some nails in it. Think about if it had sharp pieces of metal in it. And she hits you. But now they were hitting him and they were pulling. Mm, yes, sir. Listen, it wasn't just a hit. But they would hit and they would break it across his body. So not only would it puncture him, but it also was ripping the skin out as they began to pull it because they were trying to inflict pain on this man that they didn't want to acknowledge as king. What am I trying to say to somebody in here? Don't find it strange when people are ripping your name to part. Don't find it strange when people are scandalizing your name. Don't find it strange when people are trying to mess up your personality or mess up who you are. Don't find it strange because if you love the Lord, the Bible tells us that if you want to love Jesus and walk with Jesus, that you've got to pick up your cross every day and walk with him. And in picking up your cross, I come by to tell somebody in this place, as you're carrying your cross, you better understand that crucified, to be crucified is all a part of carrying your cross. Have I got a witness? <clears throat> you're going to find some people that are looking for the opportunity, Pop, to figure out how they can beat you as bad as they can beat you, how they can scandalize your name as hard as they can scandalize your name. Mother, you got some people right now that are in a position that are that are twisting up crowns and, and that are putting together whips because they understand that you are more 
to everybody else than you are to who they want to accept you to be. But I come by to tell you that who God said I am is who I am. And if you don't like it, then you need to take it up with Jesus. But as for me and my house, Ah, uh, so the Bible says that they began to whip him. They began to whip him. But watch this. This is what got me. This is what got me, Josh. Because they began to whip him. They, they, they didn't want to acknowledge or accept the fact that he, who, he, he was who he was. No matter how many miracles they heard that he did. No matter what they saw. They always wanted to discredit him. And now they had a time to where they wanted to go and humiliate him. But I need you to know that the agony that they put him through only put us to where we are right now. Because his agony was nothing but an extension of God's love. And I need you to know right now that love does hurt. But listen, love does also cover a multitude of sin. So when they hurt you, your job is just to love them. When they hurt you, your job is just to pray for them. When they hurt you, your job is just to say, God, forgive them for they know not what they do. When they hurt you, you got to know it's all a part of your resurrection. It's all a part of your rising. It's all it's all a part of, listen to me, listen to me. The things that we go through as individuals, I need you to know, we are not Jesus, but sometimes we have to sacrifice for others that we love. Sometimes we have to take the beating for someone else that we love. Sometimes we have to be talked about for the others that we love. Sometimes they got to whip us for the other ones that we love. But I come by tell you that after the whipping is all done, there's something called a rising. And when I rise from where I was to where I'm going, to God be all of the glory. We look at now, they began to make this thing that they wanted to try to inflict as much pain on him as they possibly could. They whipped him like they did. And then they tell me that they turn around and the soldiers took some vines that had thorns on them. And they began to weave these vines together. Now, isn't it amazing that not only did they weave them, but they wove, they wove them strategically. They wove them enough to where they made sure that it was enough pointing to the inside. Uh-huh. For it to, to, for, to, if, to inflict the pain. I'm going to go there, but I'm going to share something with you. But then they had some that was on the outside so that you can see what was really going on on the inside. Have I got a witness? Watch this. Pastor West, they had them pointed on the inside so that you can see what was in his head on the outside. So when you look at the points on the outside, you say, wow. That was in his head on the inside. Now watch this. It said that they wove these vines together and they made a crown of thorns. But I want you to understand that the Bible clearly depicts that these thorns that they put on here, it numbered the number 72. It was 72 thorns on that crown. And that represented the Sanhedrin tribe. Uh, uh, people said the Sanhedrin. It was the assembly, the council of people that can, we'll talk about that later. But it had 72 thorns on this crown. This is what got me though. Have you ever seen a thorn on a rose bush? Uh, you look at the thorn on a rose bush, mother, and you figure, have you ever been pricked by a thorn on a rose bush? I need you to catch this right here. If a thorn on a rose bush just pricks your finger, blood begins to come out. And usually those thorns that are on those rose bushes are small pointed thorns. Have I got a witness? But these points that was on the crown that went on Jesus' head, they weren't the typical rose thorn crowns. But rather they were some thorns that was on steroids. Have I got a witness in here? They were some long thorns because they had to make sure that it did what they set it out to do. Listen to me. And the Bible says, now if I get pricked with the point of a thorn, I'm automatically going to bleed. Ah, uh, and then when I look at the tip of the thorn, and if I look at the tip of the thorn, it's not something that is very, 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 very heavy, but yet it is something that has the propensity to break off if it's touched the wrong way. Have I got a witness? I want y'all to catch where I'm going. So the Bible says that when they put the crown on his head, they didn't just lay it there, but when they put it on his head, they pushed it down and then turned it. So if the thorn, the tip of the thorns had the propensity to break at any given time, it 
it's clear to say that when they twisted it on his head, some of them points broke off in his skull. Ah, have you ever got a splinter in your hand, Bob? Have you ever got a splinter that went down up underneath your skin and you couldn't see it, but you felt it real good? And it seems like every single time you moved, you moved your hand a certain kind of way, that splinter would come up and begin to hurt you. Well, think about this crown that was twisted upon his head. Every single time he would turn his head, he would feel the pain of the thorns that was not only in his head, but even some of the ones that were broke off in the inside of his skull. Uh, with that being said, even if they had took the crown off, it would have still been broken residue up inside of his head. And I don't know. Mama used to tell me, go get a, a needle and burn it on the stove and stick it down there and get that thing out. Can you imagine Pastor West? Mama sitting on the side of you picking thorns out of your temple, picking thorns up out of your skull because of something that another man thought that he wanted to do to inflict some pain on you, but listen to me. I don't care how much you try to do to me. That right there should have caused Jesus to bleed out and die. But I need you to know that he was on assignment from God. So even though the blood came streaming down, it still didn't stream enough for him to die before it was time for him to die. And the amazing thing about this is this. He had the power to get up and walk away from it all. Uh, as a matter of fact, when he was talking to Pilate, he told Pilate straight up. He said, listen here, can I just be me for a minute? He said, listen here, homie. He said, homie, I got to tell you something. You ain't doing this to me unless I do it, unless I allow you to do it. You can't take my life. I got to give it to you. And this came from on high. This didn't come from you. This didn't come from me. So what you do, go ahead and do. But I need you to understand. Be in a good position because what's about to happen. Oh, my, 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 my. And I need y'all to check this out. You know, they're doing all of this stuff to Jesus. Pilate wind up getting, he wind up waking up with a conclusion. He woke up one day. He said, hold on a minute, Pilate. He said, hold on, hold on. Hey, this man ain't guilty of anything that they said he did. So what do you do? He said, I'm going to get my hands clean. I'm going to get my hands. Have y'all ever seen some people in your life? I had a few folks like that. They talked about me when I wasn't looking. They act crazy when I wasn't looking. And when they seen God move on me, right before God began to move, he gave them, he said, whoop, they wind up having a you who moment. Y'all know the they mind. He wind up having one of them moments where God shared with them and they came back to me in a nice way before it was it was time to, for everything to be uh, 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 exposed and revealed. They come and, hey man, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, brother. And now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I always say this, hold up, hold up. You want to come and get it right right now because you understand God is about to do something. But I need you to know that it don't take me to have to get a dissertation from you to forgive you. If you coming at me right, right before something happened, I can forgive you. I ain't got to deal with you, but I can forgive you and keep it pushing. And so now he says, I'm going to give them to y'all. So what y'all do to him from this point on, this ain't on me. This, this ain't on me. In other words, God showed him something and he not only listened, but he also responded. Because I need you to know that when the king of kings walked in the room, I don't care what you're doing, but you better understand somebody is going to recognize that there's something different about that man that's standing here before me. Now, Josh, every once in a while, you're going to be in positions and in places where people are going to be acting a plain behind fool. And they're going to want to trip and act crazy with you. But the moment you let the power of God be resurrected on the inside of you, and the light of God begin to shine around on the outside of you, somebody in that crowd is going to back up and say, y'all go ahead on. I'm going to leave that one alone. It's something about him. Nah, I want somebody to catch it. It's something about him that says, I better leave. He ain't wrong about what y'all say he wrong about. And I don't know if y'all see it, but I see it. It reminds me of a story. Yeah. It reminds me of a story of the old man that said he was in an alley and he was about to get robbed. Pop, listen to this. He said, I'm in the alley and I'm about to, the man had just killed somebody and was about to rob him. He said, and when the man took the gun and he pointed it at him, he said, the man stopped and froze and turned and ran away. 
He says, and then I was at home looking at the news, and when I saw the news, I saw that the man had killed somebody else and had been caught and was in jail. So I went down to see the man and asked the man the simple question. I said, man, uh, you had every opportunity to kill me, and why didn't you kill me? He said, because of that man. He said, what man are you talking about? He said, it was a man standing behind you. And that man that was standing behind you was big and his eyes, he said his hair was like wool. His skin and his feet was a bronze color. He said his eyes was like balls of fire. He glowed. And when I seen him, I took off running. He said, and I went home and sat down and said, glory be to God. Because when man set out to get me, God stood up for me. And when somebody else tried to kill me, they saw the power of God. They saw the presence of God. They saw the peace of God. They knew that God was with me and they had to back up. I don't care how bad you are. You have to back up. I don't care how recognized you are for your terrorism. You have to back up because when Jesus rises up in me. So they had this crown twisted around his head. Bob. They had the crown twisted around his head. And then to be humiliating him that much more, they're going to tell him now, you're going to have to carry your own cross to the place where we're about to kill you. But I need you to know that their plans was to kill him. But Jesus' plan was to make sure that his assignment was fulfilled. All right, all right. I need y'all to know that even before Jesus got his first beat, he had a communication conversation with the man upstairs. And he simply says this: He says, Father. If this is not your will, yes, yes, yes. I need you to remove this cup from me. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Listen, and when God let him know, by the way he let him know, yes. that this had to be done. Yes. Jesus went ahead and went through the agony without having to complain yes. about anything. Yes. I need somebody in here to know that when we're suffering through our agony. Yes. We got to stop all of the complaining and trying to figure out how to get out. But I need you to know that agony is sometimes necessary. Because in the midst of the agony, not only does it allow those that you love to see how you can endure, but it lets the enemy know that he does not have the power over anything but what he's dealing with. I have to remind the devil every once in a while that the only way you can kill me is if you first got permission from the Lord. Yeah. And the last time I checked, God still got work for me to do. Yeah. So when I look at the agony that I'm going through, I take a few minutes and reflect back to the agony that Jesus went through. Yeah. When I look at how folk talk about me, I look back to how they talked about Jesus. Yeah. When I look at how they quit my name, I think about how they ripped the Jesus' foot. Yeah. When I think about how they twisted the crown of thorns, I think about how the pain is that I feel. And every so once in a while, when I think back to what I'm going through, I ask myself the simple question, how does it compare to what Jesus went through? Yeah, the body who tells me that Jesus walked around with this crown on his head. It was pierced in his skin. It had been twisted around on his head. And now he had to carry a cross that was very, very heavy. After being beat and lost so much blood. And I am got a witness out here today that knows what I'm talking about. There we go now. The Bible says that now Jesus was carrying the cross. And when you find out that the more blood you lose, the weaker you become. But isn't it amazing that when God sends you help, he'll allow you to get where you're supposed to be. So what's supposed to happen will happen. Have I got a witness? And listen here. The Bible says that not only was the crown something that inflicted agony, not only was the whips something that inflicted agony, but the Bible says when they got him up on the hill, the Bible says that they 
drove nails in his hands. And I want y'all to look at this because the nails didn't go in his palms, but the nails went in his wrists. And folks say, why didn't the nails go in his palms? Because hanging up on that cross, this is too thin and the weight would have caused it to rip through his hands and eventually cause his hands to fall but if we throw it through the wrist where the bone and the cartilage is bigger it will help support his waist and so now I got nails that have been driven through my wrist with this crown that had been twisted up on my head not to mention my back it's up on this wooden splinter thing with all of these whips and flesh pulled out of and then they add injury to insult the Bible knows that they drove nails right through his feet if that wasn't enough y'all y'all the Bible says they pierced him in the side and it said blood Now watch how he extends the love. He's laying there, all beat up, all bloody, all sore, in a whole lot of pain. But the robber on the other side, he said, Lord, he said, Lord, remember me when you go to law, when you go. And then the Bible said, Jesus said, in the middle of his pain, in the middle of his agony, he said, ah, so this day, you, 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 shall be with me in paradise. He didn't ask him what he did. He didn't ask him what he asked forgiveness for. He didn't go no conversation, but in his agony, he extended some love. He said, yeah, 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 as of this day, listen to what I'm saying, the Bible says, he's bleeding, y'all, he's hurting, y'all, he's, he's scorned, y'all, he's mocked, y'all, they sat there and traded his clothes, they shot dice for his clothes, y'all. They sat there and talked about it. They put something over his head, even though they thought they was talking about it. They was really talking about it. He said, the king of the Jews. But what they should have did, they said, here lies the king of kings and the lord of lords. But yes, Pastor West, listen. So now we begin to happen. The Bible, 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 Bible says that at the middle of all of this pain, he lifted up his voice and said, Father, Even after he spoke to his father. I know some Christians right now today. You talk to God and he don't talk back. And now you lose your mind. What did I do to God? Why he ain't talking back to me? I don't understand. He said make my request known. I made my request known. But he not answering me. But if you got the mind. If I don't give you nothing, then do what you've been set out to do. If I didn't say come down, stay.
stay up there. If I didn't say walk away, stay right there. If I didn't say put a band-aid on it, leave it right there. Yeah! Yeah! The Bible said that as he lay there and he didn't get a response, they said, how they told me he laid his head in the locks of his shoulder he gave up the coast y'all right at that moment because the prophecy says that he wouldn't die with any broken bones and now a custom was that as you were laying there they would break your legs to help speed up the death but I need y'all to know Jesus already says you not taking my life, but yet I'm giving it to you. So you can't break nothing that you don't have control over. And when he lay there and he died, the Bible says that when they got to him to break his legs, he was already gone. What they didn't know is now he turned on the activation switch to let them know that who you mess with, now you got to deal with my daddy. The Bible says that darkness fell over the land. The Bible says that the veil in the temple went from the top to the bottom. The Bible says that the soldiers that didn't understand fell down at the feet of the cross. The Bible that he died before lunch. The Bible says he was put in the grave before dinner. But before breakfast the next morning, he got up. He got up. He got up from the agony. He got up from the suffering. Jesus' hand. And they got a big hole in Jesus' hand. 
If we want to really study the Bible and, and, and be right, we need to correct folk when we talk yeah. to them and say that's not where he had to touch. He had to touch here. Yes, yes. Because he didn't have a hole right here. Yes, His hole was right here. Yes, Lord. And when Thomas was able, had Jesus been completely healed, he wouldn't have never said, thrust your hand into my side. Mm. Which basically meant not only was where he got pricked at still visible, but it had to be still open. Yes. <laughs> I gotta catch this. And when Thomas put his hand in where his side was, immediately the Spirit of God overcame him. Because right, right. he fell down to worship Jesus yes, too. Lord. Yes, Lord. Are you listening to me? Yes, what am I trying to say? Your job ain't to change nobody. Your job is to endure the agony, <clears throat> extend the love, yes. and be in position. Because every single time that you're faced with something, if you allow Jesus to be resurrected on the inside of you, yes, you will wind up finding out that over that situation, you will rise with all power. The other thing I want you to remember is what we shared last Sunday. When people want to put you through agony, just wave your palms. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just wave your palms. Yes. Let them know I'm victorious. Yes, Let them know I'm, I'm at peace. All right, all right. Because Jesus never cussed nobody out. Yes. Jesus never tried to hit nobody when they hit him. about y'all I know I know a few a few a few colorful <laughs> you had what time to hit me with that thing with the nails and stuff hey? <laughs> the lawyer preaching <laughs> you got one time and, and listen to me the Bible said they spit in his face some of us have a hard time we standing next to somebody that's praying when they talking let alone spitting on you purposely. Yes, yes. But the humility of Jesus says, I'm going to withstand this act right. for the opportunity to extend some love. Yes, Lord. And watch this. God did the first extending of love when he sent his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. He says all we got to do is believe in him and have him last in life. That's right. Jesus did the next extension of love when he came down here. This is what gets me every single time. He knew that it still wasn't going to be 100% accepted by man. He knew that everybody wasn't going to love him and honor him and respect him and worship him. But yet he still did it for everybody and gave you the opportunity. So when they sung hallelujah, halle, halle, hallelujah, yes. let's look at that from a whole different perspective. Mm -hmm. And let me share this with you as we prepare to extend the invitation. Jesus forgave a man that he didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Just on the strength that the man asked for forgiveness. Yes. We have to stop walking around with unforgiveness in our hearts. Yes, yes. Because if we expect to have the power that Jesus established for us when he went down and got back up, mm -hmm. we got to do it like he did. Amen. Forgiveness ain't for the person. Forgiveness is for you. Yes. The Bible says if you have a problem against your brother, with your brother, that you're supposed to go to them. Because he can't hear you. He won't talk to you. Yes. He won't answer you. Mm -hmm. If you're harvesting things in your heart. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh -huh. So we have to be as Jesus was. Amen. We have to do the things that Jesus did. Amen. Because at the end of the day, Amen. he just wants to resurrect on the inside of you Amen. so that God gets all of the glory. Amen. 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 With all eyes closed, all my heads bowed. <clears throat> this is a time in the service where if you don't know Christ for the pardon of your sin, This is the 
the opportunity for you to do so. If that is you, you want to rededicate your life, or you want to accept Christ for the first time, just raise your hands where you are. Amen. And the second call is if you're <clears throat> looking to become a member. And you say, I want to place my membership here. Then just simply raise your hand. Amen. As we see that there is none, but there is still yet room at the cross. Amen. Come on, somebody put their hands together for Jesus. Somebody do me a favor and tell Jesus thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because I can't speak for you, but I don't I know I can't endure somebody pushing thorns on my head. Me too. And then twisting them. And I don't believe that they understood everything that they were. When they whipped him 39 times, it wasn't just the Sanhedrin they symbolized for that. If you know your Bible, you'll find that there are 39 books in the Old Testament too. <laughs> when you begin to look at numerology, you will find out certain things about 39. And 39 also represents them, um, a council of people coming together to inflict some kind of punishment. When you look at the spiritual side of the number 39, it speaks of peace and unity. Amen. It speaks of doing things for the betterment of others. Amen. So 39 had its significance just like the 72. Amen. But at the end of the day, the significance that mattered the most is that he got up. So let us prepare for our love offering. Amen.